All right, coaches, welcome back to Big Drew in the World. I'm Coach Allen, and we're continuing our series, the Fear to Wing series, today on the wedge, okay? And the wedge is, may not be pro may not be used by everyone out of single wing offense, but I thought considering we were just talking about buck lateral, you need an episode talking about wedge, okay? That's what we talked about buck lateral in our last episode. Today, I said we want to talk about the importance of wedge. I don't think it's like... It's not the most complicated play in the world, but I think what's simple can work, guys. And I want to show you a little techniques about how to block and how to teach wedge out of the single wing and then how you can apply it. Okay, so obviously we talked about our buck lateral series. We're going to start with wedge, and I'm going to show you it off the buck lateral series first. Okay. And this is where we have our H back. Remember, we have him doing the 180 and turning. Snapping the ball to the fullback, and here we go. Now, instead of doing our trap blocking series, okay, we almost want to take our inside shoulder pads and fit them up with the center right here, creating a spear point, okay? I'm dipping and dipping and getting anybody that flows inside with each point. Each power point, we're getting inside right there, okay? All right, we step down, you know, in the single wing, you got smaller splits and everything. This is easy to sort of root out here. We're rooting out whoever can get to the inside of us. If somebody's to the outside of us, we don't mess with them because it breaks the wedge. And then here we can use this focal point to sort of just come down right here. You know, we're getting our shoulders to sh our inside shoulder to our eye to the inside of us, his outside shoulder. And here we go, and we're still keeping them with this buck lateral motion, you know, against the even front. Against an even front. Once again, remember, we're unbalanced. I can give you a 6-4 here for some reason. Okay. Now we have to fire. The center has to get off the ball right here. We're down, and we're creating this spear point right here. And we're trying to wedge the body. My bad. Wrong back. And we're trying to wedge in right there. We're getting in, inside shoulder pad, inside of their outside shoulder pad right there, inside of our teammates. Creating a wall, sort of just pushing forward, piling forward. It's, you know, guys, I think we get almost too complicated with ourselves sometimes, and we want to get all sort of tricky. Wedge is a great play. I'm going to show you a couple iterations. You can do off of it, I think. All right. I love the buck sweep motions and everything with it. You want to do something funky, okay? I'm going to show you this play. I'm going to show you how we adapted it into our offense. I don't have the film up right now. i tell you what, I'll actually pause the film to try to get it for you. Okay? So, we'll go again here against the odd front. Yeah, what the five four? Okay. What happens if you snap directly to that black and back? All right, you can do. You can do it with the buck lateral movements. I don't even think you really need to do that. I think you can do it with sweep movement. You want to move this guy out here with sweep movement to sort of just stall him. I think you can do that because this play is going to be inside right here. And I think instead of getting down deep inside just because of the play being so quick hitting, I don't think we necessarily have to cut off these backside defenders. I think we can get up to the next level. I shouldn't say backside, these outside defenders in the box right there when you snap it directly to that blocking back. Okay, don't call them a blocking back. Call them a full back, call them an H back, call them something. Sexy there. And it's an even, much of the same. It's 
Snap just going to go right here, wedge in here with these first three. Okay, I'm probably as I'm tackles or cutting off here, cutting off to make sure there's no trailing from the backside to sort of tackle them behind the line. And then my unbalanced guys get up right here. All right. Sweep, sweep pattern, sweep blocking with the wing back. That's how I would run the wedge out of this. I love that. And you can also, we'll get into the spinner series and talk about it. With this, You didn't have your whole spinner action going, and you've just wedged. And we'll talk about spinner action. You've just wedged block for the H back. So you're getting all this deceptive stuff in the backfield. Meanwhile, you just have the H running right there. So I'm going to get the film once I pause. I'll tell you what, we won't do it with the film today. We'll. Uh, I'll save that for next episode, but I want to draw it up. So the situation we had, we were playing a team that was, frankly, a lot more athletic than us, and it came down to an overtime situation. My quarterback, who had led the district, led the region in passing, he was still overcoming a uh, sprained AC joint in his shoulder, um, which sort of made him not be able to pass the ball for us the rest of the year. So we had to come up with something different. So we ran a lot of series. That's how that wedge works. So we ran a lot of series. I'll show you two things we did with wedge. We ran a lot of series where we'd have this H back right here. Jay and I could have an H back as a puller and a kicker, and I hadn't shown him as a ball carrier per se. Just hasn't. This is weird. This is weird drawing an, out, drawing an offense that isn't the win team. So we're playing, well, I'll tell you, it's William Campbell High School. Um, we get into overtime, and I knew they scored. Uh, they went up six in overtime, and I knew what play I was going to call on fourth and goal. I had no idea what I was going to call on first, second, or third. But I said, if we get in a fourth and short situation, I know what I'm calling. We just put it in this week. So what we did, this, our traditional tailback right there, okay, was a big 230-pound, just being honest, white kid, okay? Our traditional H-back was a big 240, 230-pound white kid, both big and burly. Don't know if you could necessarily pick them apart if you didn't look at the number. So. Once again, told you quarterback's out. We're on our backup quarterback who's more of an athlete, less of a thrower. We got fourth and goal at the one-yard line. Okay, and we're a traditional shotgun offense, so we're not going to go under center, okay? I'll probably have 100 coaches blow me up about that one. Um, we flip these guys. We flip those guys, and I said, we're going to run. We called it Cardinal. Okay, off of Cardinal. What well, we set up, we called timeout before the play. We set up here and fake jet motion. I put my tail back to this side. And we faked like we were coming. Athlete right there. That was our best athlete. We took him and put him at quarterback. Um, and we just faked like we were going out here with jet sweep. And everybody wedge block. We snapped the ball to our big tailback who was sitting in at the H-back. Team couldn't figure it out. We score. We win the ball game. How did we get that play? We got that play from my favorite extra point fake. So we run our we ran our extra point team like this. Okay. Normally you'll have these two guys. I think 99% of the time those two guys sit out there like this. We ran it. Like this, and I stuck up big. My normal center was usually right there. He's pretty athletic. He just eats himself out of being an athletic player. Well, eats himself out of being a skilled player. Now, our top two point fake would, would snap the ball to him and wedge. This was Cardinal. That was Cub. Okay. Why? They're two opposites. Cardinal has an R. 
Cub didn't have an L, but it's the opposite of Cardinal if you're a baseball fan. Um, and that's what we would do. Off of that, we also would convert this a couple times. We'd leak the tight end out, snap to my H-back. He would go and do the jump pass. Once again, athletic guy who just ate himself out. So those are some ideas for you. I know we're kind of getting out of the single wing there for a second, but I want to just talk about wedge and talk about why it's a good play to use and talk about that little sneaky H-back uh, direct snap wedge you can use in your offense and how I would run it. Okay, good stuff. Next week, next time we are starting on our spinner series out of the single wing. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see where the spinner takes us and how we can apply the spinner to a, to a different type of offense as well. Because we applied the spinner to the spread offense. And I've seen the spinner applied to the spread offense and what the spinner brings with it. Um, until next time, coaches, I'm coming at you with that video on Google Classroom. Um, we got a deal to the Super Bowl, to Super Bowl Sunday, $30, you get all the videos. Another $30, I set up your Google Classroom for you. Think about it, coaches. It's a way to take your game to the next level. Until next time, coaches, remember we want to score big points. If we want to score big points, we got to dominate in the trenches. If we want to do that, we got to know that big drew the world. I'll see you next time, coaches.